New Astro equipment always brings clouds, but what the heck. Let's see what the delivery guy done brought me. excited after uh, quite a bit of um, angst I guess you could say uh, I finally have received uh, this package uh, you can see it is from DHL this is my deep sky dad uh, automated flat panel for my um, AstroTech 130 telescope uh, the uh, issue was I ordered it in July and the package was lost coming out of Italy. It took over a month for DHL to finally decide that it was indeed lost. Uh, the folks at Deep Sky Dab were wonderful. They, um, I let them know, gave them the claim number from uh, DHL and they replaced it in their next cycle and <clears throat> This one finally got here. Um, this video is not sponsored by anyone. I purchased this myself, but I just wanted to show you a quick unboxing. Then I'll show you it uh, being installed on the telescope, and then we'll have a run at uh, using it with uh, and automating my flats. So let's get the box opened up and see what we have. So if you're not familiar, Deep Sky Dad uh, makes a few items for your telescope and they are um, all 3D printed and custom made for your de specific device. So this is, um, oh, and even includes a little candy, just what everybody needs. Um, you've got the, the Deep Sky Dad, this is the, the uh, flat panel it is an automated cover um, so it clamps to the front of your telescope then the flap can open uh, all controlled by ASCOM and I use Nina it can all be controlled by Nina it can open um, for viewing and then it closes to work as a dust shield in the observatory which is wonderful and then it has an integrated flat panel for taking flats um, after your imaging session. Uh, this particular model, and this is a, an option, this model has a built-in heater, so anytime the panel is open, the heater is on, so that you don't get dew accumulating on the inside, and then when the panel closes, um, you've got that dew trapped on the inside of your telescope. So this keeps it dry, works very well, um, or it's supposed to anyway. Uh, USB connection, power connection, I uh, don't know how well you can see those. Also, uh, this is compatible with an ASI Air, uh, according to his uh, information. I don't use an ASI Air, so that's not an issue for me. Um, but again, this clamps to the front of the telescope. Um, then the mechanism can open the flap. There are magnets to hold it back when it's uh, open. There are magnets around the edge here to hold it closed when it is closed. Uh, so there's a quick unboxing it does come with a USB cable you do have to supply the power cable uh, and I will power it with my uh, ultimate power box so um, we'll go out get it installed on the telescope and see where we go from there 
Okay, well, I apologize. I moved out to the observatory and was successful in messing up my video camera settings, so I only caught some stills. But um, I attached the flat panel to the front of my telescope here. And you can, according to the instructions, you can either have the panel open to the top or to the side. As I part my scope over to this direction, um, actually the top of the scope is opening it to the side. So I got everything connected, got all the cables connected and so forth, and did a first test. And what I found was, is that the, when it opened to the top, it was actually blocking my guide scope. So I had to move it over to the side, which is actually the top when parked. And fortunately, I do have video of this part. So I got everything loosened up, pulled around, um, didn't realize that should have unhook the cables first we get everything realigned moved over to it's actually on the side or the top depending on whether it's parked or not uh, and get everything tightened back up okay now we'll reconnect the power cable Right, and now we will try opening and closing, make sure everything's working. We need to do a little adjustment here. Okay. Okay, looks like it closed fine. We'll open it back. And that is working fine. We will close. All right, all looks well. So now we will uh, get set up and we'll test. Uh, taking flats and see how that actually works for us. Okay, now I've come back inside. I've remoted into the mini PC that's out into the observatory. I've opened Nina and I've connected all of my equipment. So if we go into the flat wizard under multi-mode, you can have the system go through and it will evaluate and come up with the best settings for each filter for the flats that will meet your criteria. So I'm setting binning a two by two. I shoot at 120 gain at 30 offset. You've got your minimum flat panel brightness, the max flat panel brightness, the exposure time, where, what percentage of the histogram you want to hit, and I'm giving it a 10% variance on either side of that. Now I'm shooting flats at four seconds. Normally flats are a very, very short exposure but I'm shooting a 294mm uh, camera from ZWO, and it does not like short exposures. They recommend anything over three seconds. So I take flats at four seconds. The way this works is it will set, you've got your minimum setting and your maximum brightness on your flat panel. It'll pick something in the middle, exactly in the middle, take an exposure, evaluate the histogram, adjust, take another exposure and keep doing that until it hits your, uh, 
criteria here are 45% plus or minus 10%. The SkyDad flat panel has a range setting of 0 to 4096. I know I don't need anything that wide, and I don't want to um, have to evaluate a thousand choices to get where I want. So I want to narrow this range, and I will do that for each one of my filters. The way I do that to get close, because I want to shoot about 45%, is I will go into imaging. I've turned on the flat panel. I'm going to set it for my luminance. I'm going to set it at a setting of 10. So my brightness is set to 10. I'm going to go over to imaging. I'm going to take a four second luminance exposure, bend two by two at gain 120. So we'll take an exposure. I'll hop over here to statistics and we'll see what this comes in. And it came in at 51,000 so it's a little bit bright so let's take this down to 8 we'll take another exposure go back to statistics now we're at 42 so we're still a little bit high but we're pretty close to the median here so I'm going to set my range over in the flat wizard from 0 to 8 and I will do that for each one of my filters once I've done that and by the way I've already done that so 1 to 60 on red and so forth once I've done that I'm going to go through and run and let it take two flats for each one of my uh, filters I'm going to look here if you look under equipment and go to your flat panel it will keep these trained flat wizard plane trained exposure times for each one of my settings and I'll show you why that's important in a minute so let's go back to the flat wizard and I'm going to take for each one of my flats each one of my filters and I'm going to tell it to start So it's setting loom, it's set the, the flat panel, it's taking the exposure at 6, it evaluated it as 21,000, it changed the, the flat panel, it's taken another exposure, it's 31, so it's going to change it back to 6 here. I'll take a flat. Now it's on the red channel. And it's going to go through each one of these. We'll pause and come back when it's complete. Okay, now that we're complete, if we go through and look, if we go back to our equipment tab and go to my flat panel, now I have what it came up with. So for loom, it was a brightness of 6, for red, 52, for green, 19, and so forth. So now that will become part of the Nina profile and I don't have to do this calculation anymore. Now the reason I've done this is if I go in now to the sequencer, I'll show you real quickly. Open up the advanced sequencer and I use a plugin called Sequence Power Ups. And in that there is an instruction down here called Take trained flat exposure. So if I come up here and drop that in, I can tell it how many I want to take. So let's take two. Uh, we'll take them with loom. We're going to bend by two. By camera settings, I'll keep the door keep the door closed. Is on. I'll keep it closed. And I can set this up for each of the filters. I can set my rotator to whatever the rotation was of the target that night. Or if I've only shot one target, the rotator will be at that rotation. And if I run this now, so this is taking loom. If I run this sequence, it's going to switch filters down here. It set the brightness to six, which is what it had from the training. 
and now it's going to take two flats at four seconds each turn off and it's done so this can be part of my normal imaging sequence for the night now if I go in and open up and look on my hard drive captures Nina and it's just the target's just called flat because I didn't have a target name listed here we've got a luminance folder there's the two flats that it just took if I open one of those there's the loom flat see the dust motes I've got there if we look at the histogram right about where I want it 29,000 so this is just a quick and easy way to take your flats so we've added that on here to the end uh, using some of the plugins for Nina but uh, the deep sky dad flat panel wonderful this will protect my scope by closing having a, a uh, dust cap on it when I'm not in use in the observatory which I didn't have before and gives me a way to automate taking the flats after each session hopefully you found this um, informative if you did hit that like button if you'd like to see more hit the subscribe button it would surely be appreciated thank you much and we'll see you next time